The new rules, though, they stipulate that clothes, they can't be, well, they have to be white, but they can't be off-white, they can't be cream, and that goes for undergarments, too, with just one centimeter of colorful trim allowed. Any rule uh, that offenders, uh, they'll be, uh, well, if they, if, they, uh, if they offend the rules, rather, they'll be sent to the referee's office where a suitable uh, supply of, of suitable clothing uh, will be available. So. And in other words, we're, we're back to school. We're back to school, right? Somebody telling us what we can wear if we want to play tennis. Uh, Glenn Lovett, the president of Global Strategy at Repucom, he's with us. We've always had rules in place with regards to, yeah. to what's proper to wear on, on, on official tennis courts, at least. Uh, but now we're taking it even a, st a step further. Yeah. Well, firstly, this is the great thing about Wimbledon. It stands for something. It's really special. It's traditional. And, and over the years, brands have actually tried to test the boundaries even going back to the Andre Agassi days where he actually refused to play at Wimbledon because he couldn't wear his denim shorts and his outlandish gear but actually bought into the whole tradition of that in I think it was in 1991 but in recent years you've seen Nike in particular with yeah. their players Federer and Sharapova and the Williams sisters try and test the boundaries you know orange soles to their shoes undergarments sweatbands so in this case uh, Wimbledon is actually just cracking down a little bit on that to make sure that everyone adheres to the traditional all-white rule what does it do for, uh, for the, the sports gear makers, though? I mean, they have to become even more inventive. And uh, does that mean we're pushing design now versus We do. Color? And I actually read a quote uh, today, in fact, about uh, Serena Williams. Uh, you saw Venus's quote there earlier as well. And she said she has the most fun with the Nike designers designing her Wimbledon kit because you have to be, to be clever. It's traditional, it's contemporary, it's class. And managing all that, she finds really fun. So not really a material change? to the status quo, just a slight tweak to the rules. And second question, one of the quotes involved undergarments. How large is the tennis undergarment market? How large? It's, well, it's, it's, oh, the undergarment market in particular is, is absolutely huge, no doubt about that. So an um, amazing amount of people, yeah. yeah, amazing amount of people buy that. And again, brands try and stand out. So by having colourful undergarments is a way to do that, particularly when the rules are all white. So if you do anything that's slightly different, you do stand out at Wimbledon. Um, how how do the sponsored brands uh, differ from those that aren't sponsors, or they the you know yeah. they, they the, well, I mean, yeah. the first thing is when you attach yourself or sponsor yeah. Wimbledon, it is something really special and unique. And if you've been, I went yesterday. I was lucky enough to go, and the whole Wimbledon, uh, Wimbledon experience, walking from the station into the grounds, the colours, the Englishness about it's very traditional. So actually immersing yourself and being a part of that. Great example is Lavazza, who's a new sponsor, and their tagline is a new tradition. So they're saying have an espresso with your strawberries and cream. They're also giving out uh, free coffee in the queue, which people queue at Wimbledon actually two days out to get a ticket. So it's again, finding uh, contemporary ways and clever ways to associate yourself with the Wimbledon experience. Excellent. And these yeah. new rules cover specifically colour rather than style by length size or otherwise? There's definitely size element to it. It's, it's mostly colour, but there is a size element to it. You know, for example, the Nikes of the world and the Adidas's can only have logos of a certain size. So it, it is just sort of tweaking and cracking down on where, where brands are trying to actually take it a little bit further and stretch the rules. Got to go, Glenn. Thank you very much for being no with problem. us, Glenn. Love it. Uh, President, Global Strategy from Repucom. Simon has been our guest host for the full hour. Simon, uh, heading into the second half of the year, any trends that stand out that you think uh, would be a would be a, a good trend to, to ride the wave on? I think developed market uh, equities continue to do well. Credit continues to do reasonably well. Uh, and some of these longer term investment themes, I'm noticing among our client base, people are, get, are definitely getting behind things like protein consumption. I think as we get into the end of the year, equity markets having done well will only become more prevalent. Okay. Simon, it's been a pleasure having you with us. Thank, uh, you, very thank you very much. Uh, Simon Smiles, CIO of Ultra High Net Worth at UBS. Stay tuned to CNBC Investing Edges coming up. Uh, loads, of, uh, loads of trading ideas uh, for next week, uh, and we'll also be airing this over the weekend as well. That's it for Closing Bell. We'll hand you back to my colleague stateside, and I'll see you Monday, same time, same place. Have a good weekend. Bye, guys.